Hey everybody, we have a quick demo here on limits, and in particular, limits using conjugates. A lot of people get kind of stuck when they see conjugates uh, in limits, and so we're just going to do sort of a quick review on how this sort of thing goes. So first things first, the numerator has a radical in it, so we see we need a conjugate. The conjugate that's required in this case, uh, give me a second here, conjugate that is required in this case is going to be the square root of 18 minus x plus 3. So let's go ahead and do that. And we, if we're doing 18 minus x plus 3 in the numerator, we're doing the same thing in the denominator. Remember these are factors, so we're going to be multiplying them through here. And after we multiply through, uh, we FOIL everything out on the top, and we're going to be getting the 18 minus x and this minus 9. All of that is going to be in the numerator. The denominator is going to end up being a little bit complicated, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm instead of multiplying this out, which would be a very bad idea, what I'm going to do is I'm going to realize that because we're approaching 9 here, we're going to need to factor out an x minus 9 from somewhere on, on the bottom. And you can see that there's a factor of x minus 9 in this polynomial. That polynomial, that x squared minus 7x minus 18, becomes x minus 9 times x plus 2. And we'll just go ahead and we'll leave this conjugate factor uh, sitting here on the end. So there we go. So now we have our limit. And we have multiply by conjugate. Let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit more. So we have a limit of, and 18 minus 9 is just going to be 9 minus x on the top. On the bottom we have an x minus 9, an x plus 2, and that conjugate factor. So here's the trick. A lot of people are going to be seeing this 9 minus x and this x minus 9 and they're thinking that they don't cancel. Uh, remember, just kind of off on the side here, that 9 minus x is equal to negative 1 times x minus 9. You can just factor a negative 1 out of this thing, right? Uh, so you might as well go ahead and do that. And when we factor the negative 1 out of it, what you're going to get here is exactly what you need. You've got the x minus 9 sitting on the top. You also have the x minus 9 on the bottom, accompanied, of course, by the x plus 2 and the conjugate factor. That should be 18 plus x there. There we go. So accompanied by that conjugate factor, the x minus 9s are going to cancel out, or more appropriately, we're going to replace the function we have with a new function that doesn't have the x minus 9 factors in it. This will allow us to use the limit laws, which make things much, much easier. So there we go. So we've gotten a fairly complicated problem, and we've canceled the x minus 9s out of it. And the x minus 9 was the problem factor, don't forget that. So now that we've canceled those x minus 9s, the limit laws are going to apply. This is not going to be any problem to put the number 9 into. And so we're just going to take this negative 1, and we put 9 in for x, and we're going to get 11 times. And we put 9 in again, you're going to get 18. Uh, this should be a minus x. I see I've... I've missed this a little bit earlier, but that's okay. Math is nothing if not flexible. So we'll go ahead and change those signs back to negative. So there we go. It's 18 minus x, 18 minus x, and 18 minus x. Okay, so we go ahead and we put the 9 in here. We get 18 minus 9 is going to be 9. Square root of that is 3, so we're going to get 3 plus 3 is 6. And so the final answer here is going to be negative 1 over uh, 66. So congrats to you if you caught my mistake before I did. And uh, anyway, if you have any questions on this, I'll always be happy to answer any questions in class. But uh, good luck and happy mathing.